Assalamu alaikum and salam sejahtera. Welcome to FA 110 lecture series and this video is the lecture series for number 7 on the topic of ledger entries and trial balance. So what is ledger? Well, journal is our first entry in the books of accounts. So the ledger is actually the second entry of the transactions. And it is also known as account T or account. And all the record from journal will be posted to the ledger. If we use accounting software, the posting will be made automatically by the computer. So we do not need to do the posting. We only need to enter the data in the journals. So journal entries uh, post to ledgers, for, um, we take uh, the cash receipt journal first. And in the cash receipt journal, you can see that there are the column of cash, bank and discount allowed. And we have a column of particulars. So uh, when we want to post the data from cash receipt journals, so the amount that we uh, right will be posted um, to the debit side of cash and also if the amount in the column bank so in the ledger we will debit the account bank and also the discount allowed so we debit discount allowed and the credit side is the name that we put or write in the particulars so let's say in the cash receipt journal, uh, we have a receipt from sales, cash sales. So uh, the amount is in the column of cash and the particulars is written sales. So we will credit the account sales and debit the cash. Cash payment journal is opposite from the cash receipt journals where we will credit the cash if the amount of uh, we read we written is in the cash column and also we carry credit the bank account or and also we will be uh, crediting the discount received so amount that we will write in the cash payment journal we will credit these three column and then debit what are the name we stated for example we paid utilities so we were um, paid using a check uh, for utilities so in the cash payment or cash disbursement journal um, that is in particular utilities and in the column bank so then we, when we post to ledgers the bank account will be on the credit side and the utilities account will be on the debit side. For purchases journal, we will debit the purchases account and we will credit the account payable individual account where we put the name in the particulars. And for the sales journal, we will debit the account receivables individual accounts and we will credit the sales account. And for the sales return journal, we will debit the return inward or the sales return uh, account and we will credit the account receivables individual account. And the Purchases return, we will debit the creditors, that is our account payable individual account, and we will credit the purchases return or um, the name we use, return outward account. For the general journal, it, it is specifically uh, being given what account to be debited and what account to be credited. 
the ledger that we we use the format of ledger we use in file 110 is you using the three column meaning that we have the column of date particular column debit column credit and column balance so when each transactions occur we need to calculate the balance for example uh, we have february 1st we have balance of account 10000 ringgit so we put the balance 10000 ringgit and on 2nd february we paid electricity 100 ringgit by cash so the record in ledgers will be shown as we will credit the cash account so you can see that the 100 ringgit amount in the column credit and the particular we put utilities and in utilities account you will find an information or the data saying that on february 2nd uh, and we put particular column cash and we debit the amount so one transactions uh, one uh, record will be on the credit side that is in the cash account and one record is on the debit side that is utilities account and you can see in the cash account um, by February 2nd the balance of the cash amount has been reduced from 10,000 to 9,900 after you deduct the 100 ringgit outflow from the cash account. Um, sometimes um, for students that never take uh, account courses previously, previously, so it's a bit difficult to identify what account to be debited and what account to be credited. Uh, we can use a visual um, of pictures that you may uh, have a more meaningful or more visible on how and why the account is debited and why the account has been credited. So let's say uh, the owner, the transaction of owner contribute a computer valued at 2,000 ringgit to business. So we can visualize the owner and the business is a separate entity. And when the owner gives computer to business, so business actually received or in Bahasa Melayu we say that about the computer. So that's why we will debit the office equipment or you can use computer account, doesn't matter. But uh, the office equipment, uh, one of the office equipment has been inflowed from owner to the business that's why we need to debit the office equipment with the amount of two thousand ringgit and the outflow from business to owner is actually a promise to the owner uh, to pay back in the future we mean that the business said that okay uh, in the future we will pay you owner in that um, same amount so the promise uh, from business to owner we say is a credit because it's an outflow from business and the promise is being um, translated into we called capital account so then the transactions uh, will credit the capital 2000 ringgit and debit office equipment 2000 ringgit let's see another example this is for internal transactions where we transfer cash money in the bank to the cash account or the cash in hand in the office 
So you can see that it's an outflow from the bank. So meaning that we will credit the bank account and the inflow to the cash in hand. So we will debit the cash account. Now let's look at more complicated transactions. Okay, let's say the business bought the three units of computer, four units of tables and chairs to equip your offices and, sh and shops from AK Trading. The AK Trading is the supplier or the seller, and all costs was 15,000 15, ringgit, and that will pay 5,000 ringgit by check, and the balances will be paid by 10 month installment. When we say installment and will be paid, so meaning that it will be a debt, you delay the payment to the seller. So the 5,000 has been, has been paid. So the, the rest of it is 10,000. So the 10,000 is a debt to AK trading. So we can uh, visualize or, or visualize say that um the office equipment is in flow from AK trading to the business. So business received or DAPA the office equipment so we will debit the office equipment five thousand. Oh, why we what why do we need to differentiate between the five and then always remember the 5,000 is check, using check, and the 10,000 is the delayed payment, the debt. So you need to differentiate that. Otherwise, you'll be confused on what account to be debited or what account to be credited and which amount. So now we take the 5,000 transaction first. So we debit the office equipment the 5,000 in value because that is uh, uh, the, the dual entry for it is the outflow of the cash money from the bank, meaning that we credit the bank account 5,000. We do not need to put the name of the seller because we already paid that. 5,000 ringgit. So you will debit office equipment 5,000 and credit the bank account 5,000. Now we'll talk on the, the debt, the delayed payment to AK Trading. Yes, we received the office equipment that value 10,000 ringgit. So we will debit that office equipment 10,000 but the outflow of 10,000 is a promise to AK Trading to pay the installment for the 10 month. So we will credit AK Trading. Uh, we must put the name of the seller of, uh, in the account because anything involves the debt must put the name of that particular person or entity. Otherwise, we would not know who we owe or who owed us. So you must put the name. So here we put credit, AK trading, 10,000 ringgit, and debit office equipment, 10,000 ringgit. Next, we move on to trial balance. Uh, remember just now, uh, the uh, three column ledgers will show the balances of each transactions that recorded in the accounts. So at the end of the transaction of the month, so or the year, you have the balance or we call it ending balance for the year. So the ending balance will be transferred to, to trial balance because trial balance will list off all the ledger accounts that with balances at the end of accounting year. So the accounts with zero balances are excluded. So you do not need to write accounts 
with the zero balance, just leave it out. So do not need to put in the trial balance. So the purpose of the trial balance is actually to test whether the debit and credit balances is equal. So if it's not equal, then there's, there must be an error in your account records. And the trial balance will help to localize the error. You can identify which error that probably you already made. And the trial balance is to facilitate us in preparing the financial statement that is statement of profit or loss and also statement of financial positions. Okay, this is um, the steps of uh, suggestion how to prepare the trial balance. First, we need to write the heading with the title of the companies and the titles of trial balance as at what is the date of the accounting year end. And then you will transfer the balances of accounts that has amount. Um, any accounts that classify as asset drawing or expenses must be put at the debit side of trial balance. And the accounts that classified as capital, uh, the, uh, capital liability and also revenues must put the amount on the credit side of the trial balance. And individual debtors and individual creditors, individual account receivables and individual of account payables are totaled up and shown in trial balance as account receivables, that is the customer's debt, and account payables, that is the seller's debt. And last, we will total the debit and also the credit column of the trial balance. So this is the format example of trial balance. You can see that is the name of the company and the title trial balance as at 30th June 2019. That is the accounting year end and you have the particular column that list out all the accounts uh, or the ledgers and you have debit column and credit column. See that the capital sales is revenue and account payables is a liability. So these are on the credit column. Asset is the cash, receivables, expenses, the salaries, the purchases and furniture is the asset so in the debit column and you have the total and must be the same or equal between debit and credit there is a limitation of trial balance because when the trial balance not balance so you have this kind of error omission power entry error transpositions addition ledgers or posting into incorrect set of account and errors in at the empty trial balance the this um obviously an error if you look into the trial balance because the debit side is not equal to the credit side of the trial balance however even though your trial balance is balanced, it's not necessarily that you do not have error because there are errors that are not shown by the trial balance. That is uh, error of omissions, error of commissions, the principles or the complete reversal of entries, compensating error and errors in the original entry. So these errors will be covered in the next topic that is how to correct the error in the accounts. That's it for now. Thank you for watching File 110 Lecture Series number 7. We will meet again in the next uh, video for the next topic.
Bye-bye.